Lake Balboa! Lake Balboa is the place for me where I find myself so happily squatting on top of everything when I'm naked in the heat in public. Josh! Back to our stupid <laughs> ranks, dude. It's up, Corbin. I'm Rick. You can on Instagram, Twitter, more, and choose the content. Thanks to Pedro Falls for the guy with the Battle of the Good Squad. Uh, <sighs> also, in person, YouTube channels in the description. Ever been to a nudist beach? Yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah? <laughs> Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> Do the kids go nude too? No, I didn't realize. As you're a kid. Yeah, you're, you're a kid, you wouldn't notice anything like yeah, that. I noticed, but yeah. Um. <clears throat> Are there nudist beaches in India? I can't imagine there are. I bet there are. They're just probably very remote and you have to know you're like going to. a private there, but island location. Very kind of few, thing. I'd imagine. Like I heard, I don't know if this is true, I heard that like every beach in France is topless. Is that true? They're just very open about the prospect of, I've seen like on billboards and things, they said that like, they're very open about, like that's no different for a woman to be topless than a man. Probably not Normandy, too much death. <laughs> World War Two jokes. <laughs> Too soon? I'll wait. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so what are we doing today? This is Nadita Das about dark. Dark is beautiful campaign. So okay. she talks about dark skinned people in the industry. Okay. Um, she, I think we've seen her in something, uh, but uh, hold on. Do, 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 do. Do you recognize her? I do. What uh, have we seen her in? And we liked her. Yes. Uh, but we haven't explored her as much as, uh, you know, people I like. I think we've seen her, what, once or twice? She was in Manto. Yes. Uh, yes. Ah, okay. This is where I know, because I know of Fire. Uh, she's the lead in Fire. Uh, but she is, was in Manto, right? For yeah, sure. She was in Manto. Um, sorry, I'm looking at her whole filmography here. I remember seeing her and talking about that she was had such a beautiful presence on screen. Beautiful face. I think that's where we saw her. Yeah, it's gotta be. Anyway, anyway. Uh, you guys could tell us where we know her from. I think it was Monto, but it also we've seen trailer reactions of her. Yeah. Uh, but this is her talking about, uh, I believe, dark-skinned people in the industry, and we know of those... Um, some of the situations that come up because you are dark skinned uh, as opposed to fairer skinned and what they ask of you sometimes. Yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's just so laborious to me that it's even, yeah. and annoying that it's, that it's even continued to be talked about to me. It's just so disappointing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this is what this is. Yeah. Here we go. So much in so little time. Every article of mine always begins with dark and dusky. You know, it has to, as if that qualification, without that, I'm incomplete. When you when you write about, you know, various actresses who are mostly fair, you don't start with the fair Karina, the fair Aishwarya, or the fair Priyanka. But if it is dark, because it's such an aberration, it's always written about. Um, a lot of people who try to be politically correct, they say, oh, we love the dark skin. In fact, I like dark women more. Now, you don't have to like them more. You know, you either like somebody or you don't like. You don't like them or not like them because of their nose or their teeth or their color of the skin or their hair. These are wrong reasons to like someone in any case. Um, when, when, because I do mostly films that are with real characters, real women, who are many of them who are dark, so it's fine. But when I do, and let's say an upper middle class character, you know, a class that I come from, often the directors would come and tell you, listen, this is a slightly upper class character. Do you mind making it a little bit fair? I hope you don't mind. That's it, please. Are you telling me that only the lower classes women are dark and that nobody across the class or caste or whatever is not? So it's such a mindset. It's such a stereotyping. And we keep perpetuating that, you know? 
So it was a very dangerous trend. But everybody now in the industry knows that I keep fighting about it and I'm very vocal about Good. it. Every opportunity I get, I speak Good. about it in the hope that, you know, some women will gain that confidence. A lot of women do come up to me and say, oh, we feel, you know, I've, I've seen parents telling their daughter, see, she's dark, but she's fine with it and things like that. It's so bizarre, the obsession in this country with fair skin that it sits. It's really sad. <laughs> That's all I can say. You know, in, especially in your mainstream, you have to have the woman who's fair. So as it is, um, but thankfully I don't like to do too many mainstream films unless it is a mainstream structure, but the film and the subject is really strong, which very seldom happens. And even if it does, they of course want still stereotypical looking women. My hair is not perfect, as you can see, I've tied it in a bag and over clip. And my body is not perfect and, you know, my nothing is perfect. So the hard work that is needed for that kind of perfection, I don't think I can do. I think I have far more interesting things to do in my life than to keep worrying about this. Uh, so I'm sure I've lost out on roles, but it's okay. Thankfully, I'm not a very ambitious actress. It's not like I want to be the best actor in this world or country or whatever. So I'm quite relaxed about it. If interesting and good roles and good films and good stories come to me, and thankfully they do. I choose from that and mm. sometimes they don't. That's mm. fine, I have other things to do that keep me happily busy. Uh, well, there are many now, many fairness creams have come in the market, including the ones for your underarms. Uh, there is a cream now for the vagina, which is bizarre. Oh, crap. And, and it has a stupid campaign which says that even your private parts to the, you know, to someone who loves you, you must make it fair and not some stupid so you know it's just what? it's completely crazy mm. the obsession but this is market created as well and you know there is an excess almost of everybody I and mean, you see the films it mostly has fair heroines and the ones that were dark before you see their first film and you see the same actresses now there's a huge difference you know they were they would write dark and dusky and now they still write dusky but they're not dusky anymore they've all become like completely white, you know. So it's really sad, you see hoardings, you see advertisements. I remember a, a friend of mine who's also dark, she picked up a magazine and you know, she said, all beauty magazines are here to make you feel ugly. Because they're always telling you that, you know, you are not good enough. You could do this, you could do that. And I think this is a, really a marketing thing which is harming a lot of people. Because what yes. they're losing is their own self-esteem, their confidence. And for something that they're just born with, I mean, how ridiculous is it? Even though they understand it intellectually, I think the pressure around is so much that it's, you start feeling small and you want to do something about it. It's just something that has become an area of interest, of passion to some extent, because of what it is doing to millions of girls and boys, and especially young girls who feel very pressured, who, you know, whether it's in their workplace, whether it's in their family, they're constantly being told that if you're dark, you won't get married, you won't, nobody will look at you, you won't get a good job. So I think this obsession that Indians and I think South Asians, um, a lot of developing countries have, but I think it's always like in the Western world, people want to get tanned, in here they want to, you know, become fair. So it's, it's that wanting what you don't have kind of a syndrome. So it's something that over the years has just become something that I take up as a cause because I see so many women suffer unnecessarily. I was very fortunate that my parents didn't give me that complex at all. You know, they were that way far most yes, self-assured. Very, very they nurtured many other talents and She's many other blessed. skills and all of that instead of worrying about something that you're just born with, whether it's the color of the skin, your nationality, your nose, your whatever. So it's over the years I realized that this does take away the confidence of a lot of people. So some, when somebody emailed me saying, we're doing this campaign and we'd like to use sort of your photograph and, you know, a quote from you and all of that. I said, sure. I mean, if it helps people feel that, oh, there are others who are dark and are not all the time thinking about it or are not obsessed with it or don't feel low about it or, you know, are not complexed about it, then it's, it's great if it inspires somebody good. Yes. Nandita, right, if I'm saying that correctly. I believe so. For speaking up on that issue. Yes. Because I know it's a deeply rooted issue in all of Indian society. Yes. Um, and it, it makes no sense to me, but 
you know, we have we have racism here. It yeah. makes no sense to anybody else. I was, uh, I was having this conversation with my mom last night. We were having dinner, and she was telling me about a couple she knows whose family of the wife who's white and she was she is married to a black man and the wife's family wants nothing to do with her or her children the parents don't want to see their own grandchildren nothing because she married a black man cut them out and fuck them the the, the first thing i said to my mom was I, I said i can't remember when i first noticing people were different and that there was such a thing called racism which i thanked her and my dad for mm. that i grew up in a, a home who my parents never said or thought anything differently about anyone based on who sexual orientation religious belief skin color right but then i thought and this is true the, the idea that someone is lesser than or better than because of skin color I was like, why did we stop at the skin? If, if that's, that's the thing, is that the same pigments did hair. So it's as stupid as saying, you married a brunette. I, I, I do not approve of you marrying a brunette. It's the exact, it's as stupid as that. Yeah. I will never understand it. Ladies, please don't in any way, shape or form, bleach your vaginas or make your vagina skin lighter. If you're pressured to do that, Leave whatever you can in some way, shape, or form to go somewhere where you'll be accepted for the beautiful person God made you as you are. I can't believe I heard that that's actually a product. Yeah. And obviously we've known about the fairness creams that many uh, Bollywood stars have uh, supported. Yeah. Uh, which is unfortunate. Yep. Uh <laughs> and that's the other thing. Guys, she had mentioned the director making the statement about you're going to be a higher class person so we can maybe lighten your skin. Do you know why the director made that choice? Everything they do in the film industry, they do because of you. Because you'll buy the product, you'll see the film. So if you want them to stop doing it, stop buying the products, stop putting money into the films that are doing those kinds of things. And sometimes you do it ignorantly. You know, there's times you do something and then you find out later on Oh, that was a mistake or I didn't realize that. Yeah. But when you know full-blown going in, uh, the ones that have the power are the ones that are giving them their money. Yep. And that's us. Yep. Yep. Um, so it's it's a very unfortunate issue. Just it's so sad. Just know that um, you're beautiful the way you are, man or woman. Uh, I know the fairness thing is something that goes for both women, women and men. Uh, in India, um, in terms of being pressured to not be the dark skinned person, or and it age, always looks which is unfortunate. It always looks. Nawaz like, even talked about that. He did. Yeah, you know, they, he's dark, so they gave him a gun. Right, and it always like all dark skinned people are, are right. bad well, guys. It, it always looks wrong too, because you're not the color that <clears throat> you know. Your pigment matches everything mm -hmm. for a reason, you know. Like, if you were to change your hair color and go bleached blonde, it's gonna look a little weird on you. Yeah. Just look white. Yeah, it would look really strange because your skin pigment matches your hair pigment, matches your eye pigment. Yep. And I just, I've seen, I just, I will never understand the prejudice, period. But on skin color, it just, it's evil. It just yeah. boggles the mind. Anyway. Yeah. Well, just love yourself. Yeah. That's all. Like and, RuPaul uh, says, because if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love anybody else? Can I get an amen? No. That's Ru. Give RuPaul an amen. No. He deserves it. No. She deserves it. No. <laughs> <laughs>